everyone. Welcome back. My name is Henri Biaino. This is our second session here working with NetFoundry, and I have with me Philip Griffith, who's going to help us to understand a little bit more about their zero trust private connectivity with Oracle Kubernetes service. Philip, welcome. Hi, Henri. Pleasure to be here. I'd like to talk a little bit more, uh, as a matter of fact, about another use case you guys have deployed for uh, certain customers, you know, requiring the Kubernetes uh, you know, service, Oracle Kubernetes uh, engine, right? OKE. Could you tell us a little bit more about that solution and how you guys perhaps bring agility to deploying your, uh, you know, router, uh, you know, edge router in within within that solution? With Kubernetes specifically, there there is the the approach of having private endpoints, um, and that, that's <laughs> funny story. So there's actually an Oracle blog which which lays out the the three options for doing private endpoints. Uh, which NetFoundry isn't mentioned on, but uh, there's, well, depending on when you're seeing this, there's a blog which now exists, which lays out the four options for doing private endpoints. And so, you know, the traditional ways were, well, I deploy Fast Connect or, or I deploy VPN uh, or SSH Bastion uh, server, or I do static access controls on the, on the IP, um, IPs. But all of them have have drawbacks, whether it's you know the the time to deploy or the inflexibility or the you know not be able to take it everywhere with the, with the fast connect or VPN that you you're basically just moving the attack surface because you've still got a, a publicly exposed IP address, give access to the whole network rather than you know granular things, or you know the kind of clunkiness of of static IP addresses. With NetFoundry, we have the ability to deploy directly into the private cluster. Um, so in, in this scenario for the customer, we actually weren't deploying the edge router, we were deploying our tunneler, which sits on the pod, which we deploy by running a Helm uh, install command, so we can package it up into Kubernetes to be able to make access to the private API from everywhere. Uh, and this was done by, by effectively using a, a cubicle um, and, and being able to therefore expose any of the pods or the services within that cluster um, to the NetFoundry endpoint which then you know, does outbound connectivity into, into our fabric so that we can create bi-directional connectivity, whether it's either the cluster communicating outbound or something looking to communicate inbound into the cluster. Um, a few of the things that we touched upon in, in that blog is, is really how we bring a developer-friendly approach to the solution. So, you know, for example, some of our customers have said, hey, well, I'm, I'm hosting some code in a GitHub repository and I need to bring it into my, my Kubernetes cluster. So using our open source core ZT, we created a ZT zero trust webhook to be able to deploy into GitHub. So now you can bring that, that, that code securely into your cluster without having any of that exposure to the internet. Another customer said, hey, well, I actually get hosting GitLab. So we created a zero trust ZT webhook for GitLab. Um, we've also developed a lot of components around developer-friendly APIs and then uh, automation orchestration, so some uh, Python modules or, or some Ansible modules or, or different things where you know some of our customers run NetFoundry within their infrastructure as code pipeline, um, their CI CD, but effectively being able to make it so that we can secure the Kubernetes, keep it private, but then bring in all of those benefits of easy, simple deployment, zero trust private architecture, and really do it in a software-based, cloud consumption-based model. That's great. Well, uh, thank you, Philip. Uh, I already see the great value. You know, my team actually is part of the ISV organization. I could see a lot of synergy between what you guys do and, and our customer base being ISVs, needing application presence, connecting securely to services in the cloud. My question uh, to you here, my last question is, uh, what do you guys see in terms of your future, uh, you know, roadmap with Oracle? What's next for your company at or with, with Oracle? Yeah, that, well, there's a lot in the works, some of which I can share, some of which I can't. Um, a lot of exciting things to come up. One of the things that we, we're looking at um, of one of our next blogs is, hey, how can, I, how can I deploy zero trust private connectivity into cloud functions and run as a serverless paradigm because we're able to take our, you know, for example, Java SDKs and run that within the serverless function that's been running in Oracle Cloud. And therefore you're marrying serverless compute with almost serverless private connectivity. Um, you spin up for a few minutes, spin it down. You, know, you, you, you can't attack something that doesn't exist from that point. Um, that, that, that and um, Edge and IoT, as we were having that conversation around Rover, you know, as, you're, as you're creating more of those edges, you're, you, know, you are effectively creating points of a potential attack and being able to securely connect any of those environments 
um, for customers to be able to access them, to push new configurations, et cetera. Those are the two exciting areas that, that you know, we can publicly talk about uh, at the moment. Well, Philip, thank you so much for joining us today and, and helping participate with these uh, series, the Built and Deployed series with us and sharing with us your architecture around Kubernetes. We really appreciate it and look forward to yet more sessions to come. Thank you, everyone, and we'll be uh, talking later.